Okay. I think I'm going to uh, open this meeting of the Middle School Building Committee, August 18th, 7.30 a.m., um, my 43rd anniversary. So, those of you who wonder if marriage can last, yes, it can. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, welcome everybody, and I'm going to call this meeting to order, and I'm going to call roll. I'm doing anything wrong in terms of procedure, let me know. Um, Alexa Anderson. I'm here. Court Booth. Here. Heather Bout. Frank Cannon. Justice Cameron. Peter Fischelis. Don Guerrero. I see you, Don. Uh, John Harris. Uh, I see John. You yes, see John? I'm here. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Russ Hughes. Here. Laura Hunter. Present. Matt Johnson. Present. Thank you. Carrie Lafleur. Here. Thank you, Carrie. John Wilson. I'm here. Chris Popov. Present. Charlie Parker. Here. Matt Root. Here. Robert Conry. Okay. Um, Steven Stashevsky. Here. Thank you. And Gail Dowd. I'm here. Thank you. Pat, Heather joined. Uh, Heather. Hi. Sorry, I hey. missed. I had trouble logging on. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Glad to have uh, you here. Peter Patel is joined too. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Um, okay, I don't see anybody else, um, but we have a quorum. Um, our first order of business is to go through our meeting minutes um, of uh, July 28th and August 4th. Do we have any uh, corrections for those, or comments for those meeting minutes? Uh, Pat, I'd like us to look at uh, a August 4 public comments, there's two references to the education program being quote unquote touched, i.e. change. And I don't think we have a tape to check this at the present time, but I think the uh, people who commented were talking about the facility, not, not programs for children. I don't think there was any reference to what we deliver to, to our students. Okay, so we do have that, um, we do have that tape now. So um, shall we have Susan go back and check that? Um, you know, my, my, my recollection is they were talking about the, the building, not about uh, educational programs. Anybody else remember? That sounds right to me, Court. This is Dawn, by the way, I'm on a loaner laptop. So without video and trying to sort my <laughs> audio settings out. Hey, Justin, glad to see you. John, John and I will go back and look at that. Uh, a more trivial point, the very last sentence, uh, roll call with should be two L's, not an L-E. Oh, thank you, Matt. Okay. Um, so, Court, I don't know quite what to do with your comment. Just um, do you want to wait and vote on these next week when we can get confirmation? Uh, uh, it will take Susan a while to go find the, that piece of the tape. Well, either that or you know what did happen two weeks ago? Were the were the folks talking about programming? Or were they talking about facility? I mean, I think under this circumstance, the easiest thing to do would be just to delay the approval of these and let's just look at them next week after people have had a chance to listen to the tape and correct the record. Okay. Steve has his hand up, Pat. Hi, Steve. I just have a, a clarifying. Um, I'm not sure what page actually. Page two, uh, where it says Stashevsky, you know, asked anything going out to the community to be reviewed at the committee first. 
at the end of that, it says we have already BE'd and there is a BE list of items. I would just correct that to say that we have already BE'd and we're, we're reviewing uh, the VE list once again, a second time. That sounds, that sounds right to me. Anybody else wanna? No. I guess my question is, is that the way we do VE in, in chapters or, or is it an ongoing process that we have started and haven't completed? Uh, not well, sure. Court. I, I would say the, the comment that I had in the meeting was that we be eat and that uh, we're doing it again. And I, I don't, we can answer your, that question. I could answer the question about that separately or. Well, I, you know, this is Charlie. I, I think we VE per the, per the plan. The plan includes VE in, in, a, in, a, in a, as a scheduled item. It's not something that we're somehow doing again and going over some sort of list again. We do it with each phase. So I, I think it's not entirely relevant uh, what you're getting at here. Um, well, that, my point was, I think, relevant uh, in that typically in the process, we be uh, prior to the completion of DD. And then as you go into construction documents, VE is over. That was my point, and that's what I was hoping to have reflected in the minutes. John? Thanks, Pat. Uh, I think what Steve's trying to say is that previously, to get us onto budget and schematic design, we went through a value management process where decisions were made and scope was uh, changed to get us onto budget for schematic design. Um, and then now we're, we have a DD estimate where we're over and made the decision to you know, to hold until, in theory, none of the design changed. It's just uh, economic <laughs> conditions out of our control, but we're going through that process again. So I think Steve's point was we've value managed to get us to the budget in schematic design, and we're doing it again in our current phase. I'd be happy with that. If that's how we all agree, it's fine. Court, does that address your question? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm content. Okay. Thank you. On the July 28th, I had another one, sorry. Um, at the top of page three, it was just that that long sentence, you noted that the DVD phase was complete and that we directed to move the CDs. Um, and the part that starts with and design enhancements would be focused on more detailed design enhancements. I would just, change that to um, the design enhancements would be focused on the completion of the design uh, rather than the, the duplicative uh, phrase. Any objection to that change? Okay, so um, I mean that we can go ahead and vote on the July 28th minutes. We're going to hold on the August 4th until people have had a chance to, to view it. And, um, and we'll, we'll do the August 4th ones next time. Motion to approve the July 28th meeting minutes as edited today. Seconded. Any discussion? Um, okay, this calls for a vote. Uh, Alexa? Oh, yep. Am I on mute? No. Yes. Court? Aye. Uh, Heather? Yes. Justin? Oh, you're not a voting member. Sorry. Peter Fischelis? Yes. Dawn? Yes. Lori Hunter? Yes. Matt Johnson? Aye. Um, Pat, yes. Chris Popov? Yes. Heather Parker? Yes. Matt Root? Yes. Um, Steven Sestersky? Yes. Okay. So we we'll approve that. And we'll, we'll uh, take a look at those minutes, those of you who want to, and we will vote next time on the July, August 4th and this week's um, correspondence. 
Hi there. Um, we just had one email since the last meeting, which was um, referencing us all to see an article about a similar situation that another school in Tisbury is in where their uh, numbers came back much higher recently based on the economy. Okay. Um, our next item on the agenda is the discussion of possible special town meeting timeline. And so I want to try to frame why we're having this. Uh, can I just interrupt for a minute? I'm sorry yeah. to, to do this. Yeah. So the agenda on the um, uh, town uh, agenda items does not have the li live link. It, it has not been updated and we're in the process of updating that. So okay. you know how yesterday you had the problem with the, the link on the agenda? That did not be, that was not posted on the agenda notice. Um, we're in the process, we're, we're getting Hill to send us the revised agenda so that it is posted. I'm not sure what you wanna do with this at this time. So John, my assumption is that because the agenda has that it's a Zoom call, it has the password and the ID number that any member of the public can uh, go to zoom.com, enter the, that information and have access to this meeting right now. So I, I didn't feel that that was going to, um, while it's, uh, you know, it provides a couple of extra steps for people, it didn't preclude people from participating. Very good, and we're updating it. So it will be updated within the next five minutes or so. Okay, um, all right. Okay, um, so let me try to put this in context um, and anybody who wants to jump in and help me out with this, please do. We have a dilemma. We are over budget. We um, have started doing a value management process, which we are continuing with. Um, we are sort of midstream in that value, uh, value management process. We have heard from the public um, and we know that a possible option would be if we are over budget to go back to the town and request additional funds in order to meet the scope of the project. We, so there are a couple of different paths that this, this committee can take as we go through the next few weeks. But because one of them involves the possibility of a special town meeting, I thought it was important for us to understand what the, what the timelines look like in terms of the impact of the timing of a special town meeting and the work that the architects do, our contract with the architects. Um, I think in order for us to uh, be able to make any kind of recommendation in the next couple of weeks. We really need to understand how the, 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 the designing and building process is going to be impacted by the timing of a potential town meeting, if that's the direction that we're going. This, we're not having this conversation because anyone has said we're going to have a special town meeting. We're having it to understand what the, what the process needs to be and what the facts are. So what I've asked um, our professionals to do, what we've asked our professionals to do is to try to help us understand the cadence and timing of, of the design work and the expectations of the architects around any changes at any particular time in the process. And at the same time, I've invited Carmen and um, Carrie to, uh, and Kari, if she's here, to, to weigh in on what is possible to do with a special town meeting. Um, so that's, that's the context for why we're having this conversation and why we're having it before we go into continued value management. Because um, I think we need to understand what our, our timeframes are. Does anybody need clarification on that? So Lorraine, I'd, I'd like to ask you to start or Ian to start on, you know, with your with your decision tree. I, I asked them to draw me a simple picture because this is complicated. Um, and Lorraine drew me a picture. 
Um, so can we share that and walk through it? Sure. Ian, do you have that in the PowerPoint or do you want me to bring it up? <coughs> have it. Okay. So this we did this in two hours. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be frank here. So um, and if you just go to the full slide view, it might be easier. All right, thank you. So 60% CD estimate is due on around October 20th. You know, we'll have it a couple of days before, we'll be reconciling it, but to, you know, the building committee meeting is scheduled on the October 20th. So there's two tracks, right? If we're on budget, we're all smiling, right? And that's just great. If we're over budget, there's then there's two more decisions to be made. One, if we go to the right, it's removed significant scope to get back on budget. And that decision we'd wanna make within two weeks of the estimate. So we all agreed we'd wait till 60%, we see where things are going. And I'm using the word significant because right now, you know, we have a $4 million bus. So this is significant, not death by a thousand cuts. It's not changing, you know, the, the wall finish from drywall to plywood. It's, it's square footage, this is major scope. That keeps us on schedule to keep designing and the school opening day holds. The other track to the left, if we are over budget, there's two paths as we see it. We can one, ask the town for additional funds. And as it's been laid out to us, we understand that process takes about 12 weeks. And in addition to that, we could still remove some scope. So we could do some VE and ask, or we could just ask for the money. So that's, that's your choice. That's your decision as the committee. But from there, there's still another decision to make. Do we keep designing during that time? And if so, you know, SMMA, the design team, we were gonna ask for relief from the redesign clause because we're, we are all acknowledging we're over budget and we're going back. So our contract requires us to design to a budget. And if we're over budget, we have to redesign till we're on budget. But if we're all collectively agreeing that we're over budget and we're, we're not gonna take scope out of the project, then I'm asking this committee to relieve us of that redesign clause. We keep designing. Yes, it's at risk um, for the vote passing, but we'll get to the same school opening day if vote passes. The alternative is we stop designing. We pause, we wait for the town meeting and the vote. And from there, there's two more things, right? If the town vote passes, we restart the design, we reestablish a new school opening <laughs> date, and we all move ahead. If the vote fails, We'll still have to do VE, but at that point, we're 12 weeks later, we've stopped designing. So I'm saying it's VE plus. So it's probably more than what we thought it was originally, right? Because we've just lost three months and we'd have to take that out. We have to redesign and then we establish a new date. So I know this is very generic, but we just wanted to try and lay it out because there are pathways and decisions that, that impact your what you tell your constituents impact the school opening day and impact the design team, either completing the drawings or redesigning the project. Does that, it's very simple and I apologize for the simplicity of it maybe, but we tried to just lay it out so that there's no confusion. I see Steve has his hand up. Yeah, Steve. I just was hoping that you could give us a little more context on the, the right-hand side, remove significant scope, and then the the ability to stay on schedule and so, the new, you know the contract that you have to keep to design to a, a cost yeah. could you give us some more feedback or context on how that would be possible yeah we in order to stay on schedule steve would be looking at big picture items so you know pulling the gym back to a six thousand square foot gym pulling making the auditorium smaller so we would you know squish the plan it is not taking 10 square feet or 15 square feet out of every classroom. Um, that is a lot of effort. So we'd have to work together to understand what are simpler, significant chunks of work to remove in order to stay on schedule. That's a fair question. But it, it, you know, it's not changing a ceiling tile from one tile to another. This is, this is major dollars. And, and I'll just comment that um, the, the major dollars that we're, we talked about initially was um, 5 million, I think was the, the big yep. 
that's where we in, were. in our value management we've knocked off a million point one there's not nothing to be sneezed at. We we knocked off a million dollars. We may knock off more as we get as we go through our process today. Correct. Chances of us getting four million dollars knocked off today are pretty slim, um, unless we actually do address some of the bigger chunk items today. Yeah, Pat, I'd, I'd like to pick up on that. This is Court. Um, uh, yeah, I don't want to presume we can or can't do it. Um, I, I think we might surprise ourselves that we can protect the facility that supports the education program with all the flexibility and autonomy built into the team designs and still uh, do some legitimate VE that, uh, that brings our numbers down. Um, so I've, I've got an open mind on that. I'm, I, I remain hopeful. So you're saying that, that you remain hopeful that we'll, we'd be able to um, eliminate, we'd be able to get back on budget without impacting um, the educational uh, program delivery. Or yeah, I think that you know, my, my opinion is the town needs to see us try. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Totally agree. We need to try. Um, I'm glad you're optimistic. Matt. So I think that just as we're doing feasibility analysis here of a special town meeting to override the budget, we also need to do feasibility analysis of the VE plus as it's described here, so that we have a stack ranked list of things that we would take if we have to. And I think that would really help as we then see where our 60% estimate comes in. And then we would be able to uh, you know, balance, well, what is the budget overage versus what is the additional VE that might need to be taken beyond what we've already agreed to? And, and to me, that that's the other half of this process. And I haven't seen yet a commitment to building that. I've seen us so far just going to, okay, we'll take this, we won't take that, but not to start to say, here's the prioritized list of if, if it gets to this, this is what we would do after that. And I think that would accelerate this process of getting back on budget if for either the town meeting vote fails or we decide that you know it's a modest amount under budget, doesn't make sense to go back to town meeting, we will just take one more large cut and get back on budget. You know that, That's the kind of uh, balancing decisions that I think we need to make. I don't see any other hands up. And um, oh, Heather. Sorry, it took me a minute to <laughs> find the hand. Um, I, I just want to make sure as we're talking about significant cuts here, I want to keep in perspective that, at least, and maybe I've missed something, but one conversation we had in the past was that we wouldn't, as a committee, just make those really significant cuts, the four and $5 million cuts without going back to the town. So at one point, I forget, I think Charlie or, or maybe Court, someone recommended that we have, we lay out two different options. Maybe it was Matt to say this, if we needed to get down to that number, if we needed to make big cuts, this is what it would look like. And then also if we didn't, this is what it would look like. And this is how much more money we, we would need. And that we would bring that to the community presumably in a town meeting. Uh, so I just want to make sure, is that is that still the thinking here? Or are we, is this committee now considering taking huge cuts without going back to the com community, which I will just say I'm not comfortable with. Well, let me just say that, like I was saying, if it was one more item and, and you look at all the examples of if we do go to a town meeting vote, there is a delay in, in you know opening the school. And as we've heard, escalation is also a risk whenever there's a delay in addition to just costs you know so i think that we need to take that into account that it's not like you end up back where you started if you then just pause and take you know go to a town meeting vote and then you know come back so we we have to be 
mindful of that. And it may come to, yeah, we take that one more cut because that way we can stay on schedule, keep in budget. Whereas if we go to the town meeting, we're going to necessarily have a later opening date and perhaps just additional costs for the same scope. So I'll just, I see some hands and I want to respond to that. Um, I just want to also say the, the purpose of this conversation is to see what is possible in terms of if <coughs> what we decide we need to do is get town input on making these big cuts as Heather has, has said, is it possible for us to schedule a town meeting within a time frame that fits within this decision tree. So instead of waiting until January or February for a town meeting, could we have one in November? Is it logistically possible and legally possible to make that happen? Which is why I asked um, the town moderator to come and uh, to, to, to help us out with that part of the equation. So it's, it's not- Yeah, but the town meeting vote would have to be for an amount of money. We don't know what that amount of money is yet, right? Well, one of the things I asked um, Carrie yesterday was, is it possible to write a warrant article that basically <laughs> says we're asking the town to approve up to a certain amount if it is necessary? Um, not that we would definitely spend that amount, but we would go to the town with, if it's necessary, the town prefer that we go up to no more than this um, rather than making the big cuts. Because I, I think that's the question we're, we're, we're asking ourselves and asking the community. So I'm gonna uh, stop there and go back to hands. Um, and you know, um, it's not usual, but Peggy Briggs from the Finance Committee is on this uh, call and I would like to uh, indulge uh, having her speak as well. Uh, during this period, unless anyone objects. Okay, Alexa, you had your hand up. Uh, you're mute, you're on mute. Um, I was just gonna piggyback on what Heather said, and um, maybe this is what Peggy's about to say too, but I've watched, um, I think the most recent two finance committee meetings where they've talked about this and they were sort of asking for the same kind of thing um, that if we were to go to town meeting, could we possibly present options to the town? You know, a, an on budget school building would look like this. And the building that was passed on January 20th in terms of its size and scope would cost this. So I don't know if that's possible or something we want to discuss, but what I heard from their meetings was an interest in that kind of perspective or ability to vote that way at town meeting. So again, it's sort of to Matt's point, do we need to make those cuts if in fact a better option could be what some at the finance committee have recommended or at least discussed? That's all. Thank you, Alexa. Peggy? Yeah, I, I will follow right on uh, what Alexa represented from our meetings, which is very, very accurate. Um, there's only two things we know. We know the town is willing to spend $103 million in the middle school, because that was voted. And we know they voted for a certain uh, school. Uh, so that's the high and that's the low. Um, in terms of pricing and uh, the finance committee is very interested in you know what the building committee will present sort of in between um we know I, some of us know but no one knows <laughs> it's a big committee I'm, i absolutely cannot speak for my committee members um but there's certainly been a request for uh, what the school uh, what the school would look like with the approved 103 million and uh, what you know what the cost will be at 
the full build, which we expect is going to be three uh, from estimates into bidding, uh, which is the reason to get a number out there now. And the third is, um, you know, I just uh, fully representing the cost cuts that have been taken since the bids came in. And whether it whether it's you've been talking about this, but whether it's roof tiles or whatnot, you know, I mean there's been some value engineering and that needs to be quantified. And I think uh, you know it potentially going to a town meeting with the alternatives and not just an up or down. And I think that's where the what the finance committee uh, would love to see, like a, the, you know, what's the we voted on this school. What's that going to cost? We voted on this money. What's that going to look like? And something in between. And uh, historically, I mean, those could all be put on a single ballot. That's. Uh, I think that is that where the pendulum is right now. Okay, John Cutler, see your hand up. John, is your hand up? I think not. Matt Johnson. Yeah, I would just say that the uh, other thing that we would like to have is that the special town meeting take place after the reconciled 90% estimate is received. Because in that case, we'll know that whatever amount that the town votes would be something that could, you could go out to bid with, rather than having an authorization that potentially after the 90% reconciled estimate comes in, we cannot go out to bid and we need a second special town meeting to approve that. Okay, so um, I'm going to pause here and Lauren, you want to go back to your decision tree and, and just speak to what is the feasibility or what happens if we wait till the 90% reconciled? Um, Again, sorry. it's not waiting until the 90% to decide whether to go to special town meeting, but to hold the town, special town meeting after that uh, estimate is received. So I, the decision tree that I thought we were working with is wait till the 60% estimate where it let us know whether we think we need a special town meeting. Call it then. That leads to a town meeting that is, happens right around when the 90% reconciled estimate comes. And so that gives us the, the information we need to know what we really have to approve in order to have a project that you can build. So if you can pull up the decision tree. Um, um, look, I, I think it would be helpful actually to go through the schedule here okay. just to show how the parts and pieces fit together. So I can I can put that up as well. And I know there's a lot of information, but I'll try to I'll try to simplify it for you guys. And um, while you're pulling that up, I'll just answer Matt's question. So um, there's there's substantial risk to continuing at, after 60 percent over budget. So it falls into that decision that do you ask the design team to keep designing to the project that is at 60%, you know, the scope of it and whatever that estimate comes in at, or are you asking us to stop and wait? Because if you're asking us to continue, then, then there, is, there is a liability concern that I have. So you would have to remove that, that liability from our contract. I mean, we cannot continue to design a project that's over budget that we all agree is over budget, but then ask us to redesign it if you if the vote fails. So there has to be a discussion about that, Matt. Yeah, and, and the implications we... of redesign would be uh, time lost on the schedule and you know compensation for redesign. For the but haven't we decided that the 60% estimate is the point at which we will ultimately decide whether we're over budget? Yes, but what you were saying is that you would then hold the, uh, the special town meeting after the 90%. So if we're no, over no, budget- No, but we would be calling the special town meeting based upon the 60%. So in other words, we would be making a move to address this issue at that point. 
Okay, but if the special town meeting failed, Matt, and you then had to VE, that's that's my so that's my concern, right? That's a, as that's the design team's concern that if that special town meeting failed, we would have to go back and VE and redesign. How is that different from now? Because we're making your we're asked we asked you to make that decision at the sixty percent, so we would be designing between sixty and ninety to a known budget. But there's no way we'll have a special town meeting before the sixty percent estimate comes in. I understand that. So which I don't understand they, the difference. Which is why the which is why the conversation is happening about <clears throat> right moving up that special town meeting if that's going to be the decision. Let me just try to 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 pull this in. So what we're what we're wondering is, and again, this is why we have folks from the town and the moderator here, is would it be possible close to October 20th, maybe the beginning of November, or you know, would it be possible to have a special town meeting in which we can understand what the town wants us to do? relative to this project? Does the town want us to, to stick to the budget and cut scope? Or does the town, is the town have an appetite for increasing the budget um, and presenting the town with those options? But the, that town meeting would really need to happen very soon. We'd need to decide we wanna do this and we need to get the town to say, yeah, it's possible to do this. Um, all right, we need to understand if it is possible. And I see Carmen's hand up. And so I'm hoping Carmen is going to tell us what, what is possible to do. Um, because if, if we had some more certainty, then we wouldn't be designing, not knowing what's going to happen until February or March with, with the town. Carmen? So uh, I think that the... Uh... The, the 12 weeks from the start to the conclusion of the special town meeting process is pretty much correct. So the real question is, can you start that 12 weeks at a sooner point? And the answer to that is whether you ha will have ready a warrant article um, that you um, can stay within the scope of uh, by the time you get to the meeting. And uh, one way to do that would be to uh, call a special town meeting pretty much immediately um, and then pick a date when it was going to happen. And we, we have kind of a, uh, Matt has given you before the calendar of, of uh, what that would look like. We have certain requirements in terms of how many days the warrant needs to stay open and uh, and then there are certain uh, things that have to happen, like the posting of the warrant. It needs to get mailed to every household pursuant to our bylaws. And the finance committee has to do a report and there has to be a hearing. You know, there are various logistical issues. And then, of course, there are printers to be dealt with and so forth and the post office um, in the middle of that. So it's pretty it's uh, pretty impossible for us to compress that 12 weeks any tighter. Um, but you could start it with a warrant article that asked for uh, the full amount of what the estimate came back for, for the current design. And that scope would allow you at town meeting to present lesser options, options that were less money than that um, largest ask. Um, and in answer to the question, whether it's possible to present different options to the town, uh, at special town meeting and ask them to select from them. Yes, it's completely possible to do that. Uh, years ago, we haven't had it. We haven't had a deal with a um, proposition two and a half override budget in a long time. But years ago, when we did, we would uh, we had a procedure for presenting one, two, or even three budget numbers. Uh, to town meeting, and we would start with the highest one, then move to the next highest one, then to the third highest one, and the proposal which garnered the most votes uh, would be the proposal which the town adopted. So um, we can do something like that for uh, this uh, process if you would want uh, to do that. 
And then the notice requirement is people need to understand the basically the worst case scenario. You know, what are you asking us to do? That's why you can't go up, but you can always go down. So you can have less of an ask if you want to. Um, I suppose the flip side of that is less money here means some cuts to the building design and maybe some substantial ones vis-a-vis uh, -vis what the town expected would be the design when it voted in favor of the project. So um, I suppose you could have a situation where um, one could argue that there wasn't, you know, if you made really substantial cuts uh, that, uh, that uh, there was an adequate notice of that. Um, but, uh, but I think you could probably address that by putting some wiggle language uh, in, uh, in the Warren article that said something like, uh, you know, whether the town will approve uh, this amount for the current design or uh, a lesser amount uh, with design adjustments. And then people understand that both things are gonna be discussed and uh, you've got 12 weeks to get ready for what you're gonna, actually you don't have 12 weeks because you have to have your proposal ready for the finance committee to be able to review it and vote on it and write a report and make a recommendation. So they would need to know by the time they're putting their recommendations out what the choices are. And by the time of the hearing, you would wanna know what the choices are. Uh, but if we look at the town meeting schedule, you can kind of see when you would need to have those things um, ready by. So I, I hope that's helpful and I'm happy to answer any questions. And, and I know Kari Tari is here and if there's anything she wants to chime in with, um, I'd ask her to please do so. Yeah, one, one question I have and Kari, I apologize, you sent me this in an email, but I didn't have a chance to read it yesterday. Um, would there need to be a ballot vote um, following a town meeting? I'm, I'm just, I'm, again, I'm thinking about timing and how long all this will take and the impact on the project. I, I don't actually know about um, the town election, a special town election for that. I would have to talk to um, the finance department about that. I don't know if Gail is on this call. Um, yes. Yeah, there's, and I think the DOR has some new guidance, which I heard about yesterday, but I didn't have a chance to look at. They came out in July. They do. Okay. Yeah, so um, I'm not sure about going to, going to a ballot after that. I don't, I, I think it all depends on the percentage that it's over the budget. So it, I think if it's with over 10%, it has to go to town meeting, but that. And I can check, I have not had a chance to look at the new ruling, but what we had was a 10% threshold from the DOR, but they did say to stay tuned that the requirements were changing, especially given the current environment. So I can dig into that a little bit deeper since it they did just change it recently. Okay, all right. And uh, Pat, if I might add, I think this um, may be also a question for bond council because uh, you know you just have to do this right in terms of whether we need a vote on an override, another vote on an override and what it needs to look like in order for you to be able to sell the bonds. That's critical. Okay, so um, Madam, you're next, but um, just to summarize, we're, we're narrowing in on sort of what the timeline needs to be in order to make significant changes in the project. We've had some discussion about the expectations of the town being involved in whether or not we make significant cuts to the project. Um, and, uh, and we're gonna need to, we're gonna need to come up to, with some kind of a, um, of a decision so that if we are going to ask for a town meeting as a committee, 
I believe it would be the board of select, the select board that would call that town meeting. Am I correct, Matt? Uh, that's the normal process. There are other ways to call a special town meeting, but that would be the most orderly way to do so. Yeah. So I think that what we would have to do is we decided as a committee is, yep, we want to try and get the take the pulse of the town before we get too deep into to the design. And then we'd have to really hustle. Um, so Matt. So just one clarification of something that Carmen said that uh, she had mentioned about, well, the connected nature of the design to the amount that the town, you know, voted for. And that would probably be the case if we offered options in this, uh, by the way, I think other people that have their mics unmuted is creating background noise. So if you're not speaking, um, so that in that case, there would be a linkage between the scope of the building and the amount approved. But I should note that the authority that we're under right now, the last town meeting vote, the special town meeting vote that was taken, we could independently make cuts that that, that was not tied to specific design elements. We have the authority as a committee to make those design decisions. So I just wanted to clarify that. The second thing is there's one thing to decide like uh, whether we have the ability to go without calling a townwide election but let's say we authorize an additional $5 million worth of spending. I, I think that the general feeling in Concord is we would want a townwide election to approve that kind of increase in spending, even if the state or bond council would allow such a thing. Heather? Um, can I just comment quickly? I completely agree with Matt that we would have the legal authority to make cuts to this. I just don't think we should. I think knowing Concord and the and the way people voted for this and want to have a say, I don't think we should make significant cuts. I think it would be seen as irresponsible. So it's legally our right to make significant cuts to this, but I don't think it would be irresponsible. Peggy? Uh, yeah, just um, relative to finance, finance committee, um, you know, there are sources of money, uh, free cash, uh, you know, sources other than raising taxes, so mainly free cash, um, and any know, budget underruns in the coming year, which would typically go to free cash, whether that would be $5 million, whether we feel comfortable allocating all of that to the middle school um i i i think those chances are pretty slim knowing some members of the committee so like i said we know two things the scope of the project was approved the budget was approved and uh, you know we, we would either push depending on the committee member <laughs> Push for a lower scope or finding someplace to find that money without going back to town meeting. And I agree with Heather. I think, um, uh, you know, most of us would prefer probably to get, you know, get the citizens approval. Not, not to say we won't push for both of those either. Anyway. Thank you, Peggy. Are there any other thoughts in the heads of any other committee members to uh, weigh yeah. in on this? Thank you, Court. One, if I may. Um, we are framing this only around cuts. Um, and I think we need to step back and help the town understand that uh, it, that's not the only way to frame this. Um, we have started with no middle school. We brought in a $68 million fine gold estimate. We sought state support, which would have required a lot of discipline. Uh, and now we're at 100 with a contingency. So 
in addition to looking at this as cuts that may be necessary, we've got to look at this as a magnificent facility that uh, started from scratch. Let's keep that in mind. So just so I understand, your, your, your point is to not think of this as having to make cuts, although I, I would argue, Court, that we would be changing the scope of the bill. It would be a different building than what the town voted for in January. So that, yes, it's it, we're, we're way beyond the fine gold estimate. That's way in the right. Now. And I would say we haven't finished VE, so that point might still be arguable. Um, I, I'm keen on showing the town that we've we've done the the due diligence on value engineering. That's in fact uh, not uncommon at this point in a project. Yeah, and and I think that we would all agree with that. I totally think we would all agree with that. It's just can we get five million, four million? Yeah. And, four million out of this, and that we and, don't know yet. Yeah, and and we don't know. So I guess my my main point, Pat, is I don't want this committee, my personal opinion, to uh, really emphasize that the town should understand this as a process of loss, things being taken away. It's not. Uh, we're already from gone from zero to a hundred plus million. So it's a magnificent building. And I wouldn't want the narrative only to be, we're taking things away from you because I think we're not. I think we're trying to provide a pretty magnificent school with now a hundred plus million dollars. So I, I think uh, it's not only uh, seen through the, through the lens of cut or loss. That's that's my only point. Okay, Chris, you had your hand up. You're on mute. Yeah, I don't know. Dawn might have had, might have had her hand up first, so you can go ahead. Dawn, oh, I'll, I'll be brief. Thanks, Chris. I did have my hand up. I took it down. I put it back up. I just want to make two points. One quickly is that the MSBA process. I hear this come up. Of I've heard it come up a few times recently. Uh, that's not to say our building would necessarily be any different. We just may have to pay for some additional space, example, auditorium that they don't provide at a middle school level. They'll still let you have it. It would just be 100% on Concord. So, and sorry for my kids in the background. Um, so my point about that is just, an MSBA building wouldn't mean we'd necessarily have a different building. It would just mean they wouldn't necessarily fund the some of the additional space. So they'll still let you build it. Um, my second point, uh, picking up on what Court was saying about it only being about cuts, I think our goal here is twofold, right? To provide a great facility, I 100% agree. It wants to meet the educational plan or provide space to allow for that with flexibility for the future. We're both building a 50 year building, but also, because we heard loud and clear from the community to provide space for community use via auditorium and gymnasium. Um, and we've you know, exhausted those conversations previously. So I just wanna make sure that, you know, I, I agree with you, Court, but I wanna make sure that we keep our eyes on the prize, which is that we're providing an educational facility to meet the goals of the educators in Concord to, to facilitate a building that supports the educational plan, but then also a building that, um, you know, meets the community needs. So that's all. Thank you. Chris? Yeah, a couple points. Uh, I feel a whole lot more comfortable as we discuss the various options for town meetings, scheduling, and whether we do or don't need a vote you have town council involved and the town manager involved. So everybody's on the same page. We know legally what is required. What I've heard so far today is a lot of guessing and we've got to eliminate that guesswork. So we don't run afoul of those things, including bond council. Uh, also, I heard discussion of the committee doing something that could alter SMMA's contract. Again, I'd feel much more comfortable with town council and town manager on board with anything that has to do with negotiating any possible change in the contract of SMMA and the contract of Hill for that matter, because that may come up as we continue to change scheduling and when this project might be, get completed. Um, 
picking up on Matt's comment, I think we want to get a better idea of a time frame and an estimate of what the delay would be. Because so far, what I'm getting from this discussion is we'll have a significant delay in the beginning of construction and the completion of construction. And that's a huge factor. So again, Matt's point is well taken. We can make a lot of changes and find ourselves that we haven't saved as much money as we had hoped. Um, as far as other things and major changes, I also wanna be very careful that we do this in a detailed way, in an incremental way. Uh, with all due respect to Lorraine, each time she throws out a cut of 3,000 square feet from the gym, of course that's a possibility. Likewise with the auditorium, likewise with other spaces in this uh, facility, uh, but that may not be the only thing that is necessary. One could think of 1,000 square feet. That's a significant number too. 2,000 square feet is a significant number as well. But I think each time somebody throws out one number, that starts to become a placeholder before we've actually done our due diligence. And to pick up on Court's point, you know, there's a lot more work to be done here going through the concept that we think we have and understanding that concept and the details in those drawings and the changes we wanna make to try to reach this budget. Uh, quite frankly, when I look through the design plans that I've seen in May, and I look at what the town authorized in January, where we are today, I'm not quite sure we have enough detail to make intelligent decisions about some of the other changes, even some that aren't on the VE law that we wanna look into. So there's a lot more work to be done. So we're prepared to talk intelligently to the voters if it comes to that. Thanks. So we have a dilemma. Uh, okay, Heather, thank you. Raise your hand. So I won't take long. I don't want to keep jumping in, but I, I, I guess I want to tie two things together there that both Court and Chris said. One, I agree with both of you that we definitely need to do the hard work here. There's no doubt. And when I say said before, you know, we shouldn't be making cuts <laughs> without the town's input. That doesn't mean we shouldn't be doing the work and looking at what that looks like. So we absolutely have to do the hard work and look at what the, the options are. I like the idea of bringing options to the town. Um, but the second point is also, again, to, to Chris's point about, and Matt's, about timing, that if we wait a long time, we could lose the advantage of some of these. So I guess where, that, where both of those bring me is, and this can lead to where you were going to summarize, Pat, but is it, is it possible to look at starting that 12 week timer for a town meeting soon so that we get a date on that's not going to delay us so much that we cost extra. And at the same time, while that's going on, we do that hard work and we look at all of the options. And by the time we get to town meeting, we're able to go there with, let's say two options. You know, One that has some really difficult, maybe cut, whether you call them cuts or, <laughs> downsizing and one that has less. It, it, both of them are gonna have some downsizing in cost because we're gonna do that hard work. We've already taken a million, but so anyway, that's just my point. Can, can we make the timing work for us? Thank you, Heather. And I think that's the question today. And the, the, what Carmen laid out uh, to me presents a path that doesn't imply that we're going to not look at whatever we can look at or whatever we decide as a committee is appropriate for us to look at between now and when that town meeting happens. But it just, all, we're at, all I think we're asking ourselves is, do we think there's enough of a possibility that we need to get town input before we come to final decisions that we need to pull the trigger now on, on starting the town meeting process and getting that bond council advice and getting you know, the town clerk and you know, everyone to, to weigh in and let us know what our possibilities are. Charles. 
Oh, uh, you calling on me? Yeah, Charlie, yeah. Yeah, I, I just want to remind everybody that we don't really know the size of the problem yet. We're, we're proposing, a, a, we're, we're embarking on a process of, you know, making adjustments to the to the school. I, I don't think anybody's, I think I agree with what Court's saying about what a frame this as adjustments, not as cuts. But we don't know the size of the problem. We don't really even know whether we can achieve 5.3 million without making a change in scope. And there are a lot of discussions we'll have about that, whether a, whether a recommended change is a change in scope or not. So I, I would urge us to get moving on the, the discussion uh, uh, with respect to these VE uh, you know, activities. That's kind of one of the main courses for today. Absolutely. I don't know how much more we can make of this discussion that we're in now, um, but I, you know, I think we ought to get on with the, with the, uh, with the deliberation around the VE process. Steve, I completely agree. We should move on. However, would I? I would love to ask two questions to follow up on what Chris said. Is that do we actually need to ask for additional funds up to a up to a line? Can we determine that as a committee? Can we ask the finance committee and the others to define that line of what we can spend uh, overall, given what the town voted on at the 103? What is our actual legal right? And then also, uh, I forgot the second point, but we can move on and I'll bring it up later. I'm sure. Thanks. I had some, some thoughts just to help tie things together here, maybe. So um, what what I think I'm hearing from this group, or or at least some folks in this group, is that there's, there's some hesitancy to keep de designing at, at risk beyond 60%, which is kind of what we talked as the as the threshold for making changes without incurring potentially incurring additional design fees and delays. And there's also some hesitancy to stop designing, right? Because uh, you're gonna incur scheduled delays as, as well. So that really um, brings you to a point where you have to start thinking about the that parallel path now being setting up a town meeting um, in the near future and having a menu of, op, you know, defining the upper limit, which you could use as just throwing this out here as an idea, you could use the 108.4 million as the upper limit because that's the best information that we have at this point. And then have your menu of options, you know, that being the high limit where you you know, keep keep the design as is. Um, having a, an intermediate limit where we would continue down that path of value value engineering, value management, and you know, land somewhere uh, in between. And then the lower limit would be you know getting back to the one hundred two point eight budget as the low number. And you could you could work towards that um, systematically, getting you know going through VM over the next several weeks to establish what those two last um, options would be, right? Um, meanwhile, you're, you're proceeding with the special town meeting process, right? So that's a 12 week process to, to set up and, and execute a special town meeting on the parallel path, you're doing value management to, to present those three options at the town meetings. Is that, does that make sense? Yeah, Ian, I think that that is that is the, the question we're asking ourselves. And yes, I would like to get to, you know, let's get back to VE. But if we don't make a decision about this, we're going to lose weeks. We keep losing weeks. We have to, this committee, I think, needs to come to a consensus that we would like to ask the town, the select board, to schedule a special town meeting for 12 weeks out from whenever. Today. From today. <laughs> okay, 12 weeks out from today. Um, and but in the meantime, but we are continuing to work to 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 make this budget work. So 
But we can't, if we just keep delaying it from week to week to week, we're going to lose that opportunity. And, and then we may be in the position of making enormous changes to the project without getting any town input, which I personally am also not comfortable with. Court. Yeah, just a question. Um, it seems as if uh, what we're narrowing in on right now is do we make up make up a number that gives us a little rum and move to town meeting with a not to exceed with some confidence that our guests uh, will turn out to be a wise one. Uh, alternatively, as Mr. Johnson said, wait until we get the 60% numbers, which we've already decided to do, that then would allow a town meeting to be called that would coincide with uh, a number being declared at the 90%, if I'm, if I'm correct. Uh, the problem that uh, that uh, involves is then a three month delay, I guess, to put it in very simple terms. And if that's true, uh, Ian, you've got the timeline. Does that mean from a student perspective an opening in September instead of April? Is that the practical consequence for kids? Yeah, I, I, I think so. You could you can make that assumption that everything just slides slides back three months from a from a bidding standpoint, construction start and, and opening date. And uh, there's no indication that that means prices continue to go up. Uh, thankfully, we've already seen some flattening in, in the industry in the last since uh, uh, we've been watching these numbers over the last few weeks. Thank you. So just a process question. Is this something that we would conceivably take a vote on today? Are we looking for a motion to start the town meeting process? I, I think we are. Um, I, I think we are. I think we need to know what the consensus of this committee is. And it's not us starting the town meeting process. It's us right, requesting the board board. That, that would they would start a town meeting. So should I put a motion on the table maybe we'll let peggy, let, let's, let peggy let, let's hear from peggy and then um yes i'd love a motion okay peggy you're muted i'm also going to push this over to carmen it, it seems like uh you know you're really talking about four months not three from today by the time the motion's approved it gets the uh, board selectman etc and the motion, if you, I think, Carmen, if, if the motion's prepared properly, by the time you get to town meeting, if you have information, you know, usually it's worded, you know, X dollars or any other sum. And if Carmen determines, determines it's within the scope, that um, you can continue to be working uh, toward the next estimate or more detailed numbers. And still present those at town meeting once you get the ball in motion. Carmen. I'm sorry, I'm not the chair. Pat, back to you, Pat. Carmen, back to you, uh, Carmen. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, uh, Peggy is exactly right. Uh, you cannot go more than a small increment. And traditionally, we've thought about 10%. But honestly, when the numbers are this large, I think it might be less than 10%. Um, but you can't go over that amount of money because you have a, a notice problem uh, in, in terms of what the warrant says. But you can certainly go under it. And you can go under it as much as you want. So. Um, so you could start with a larger number and you definitely have the flexibility to develop the numbers further, develop options with different numbers uh, in time to present them at town meeting. The one thing that I would observe, though, is that is, is again, you, you, you want uh, whatever proposals you're going to make at town meeting to be ready to be made by the time of the hearings so that the public knows what the proposals are and so that the finance committee knows what the proposals are and is able to make their recommendations in a report. So by our typical calendar, or at least by the one that uh, Matt drafted, which I thought was quite reasonable, 
for a special town meeting, that basically means 30 days out. So you wouldn't want to call the meeting until you knew that uh, uh, that you you wouldn't want to open a warrant uh, more than 30 days ahead of the time that you knew you were going to have your proposals ready for presentation at a hearing. So that puts us out an additional month. We wouldn't be able to have a town meeting close on the heels of October 20th. It would need to be, we've added a three-day window there. Am I understanding that? So it'd be more like a November 20th or December 1st town meeting. Uh, well, you know, you you could open the warrant September 1st if you wanted to, but I wouldn't do it unless you knew that by September 30th, you would have the, the, uh, the VE done and the proposals ready to present to uh, the community and to the finance committee on uh, here's what the building, okay, okay, here's what the building looks like at at um, at 108.4 million. Here's what the building looks like if we do 106 million. Here's what it looks like if we do this, which one do you want? But you would have to be ready with enough meat on the bones to make those proposals um, 30 days after the warrant opened. Got it. And, and for the for committee, what we wouldn't have at that point is any of the new estimates, the 60% estimates. We wouldn't know if there were changes in um, escalation of, of costs or inflation. But we would know how much we were able to trim out of the budget. So, Heather. So from the, I'm sorry, from the final, I would, I would, I would suggest that you Escalate the 108. Um, you know, I know everyone's speaking at it 108, but if it comes at 110, 112. You know, you don't want it to have to go backwards, as Carmen said. So I would, uh, you know, take your 108 design and escalate it in some respect, and then you know, show the cuts as Carmen described and show. The one of happens at 103. Um, so there's sort of three alternatives. Um, you know, and get, and get those on the warrant. The regular town meeting warrant is in December, right, Carmen? So we want to get ahead of that uh, just for separation. That'll put pressure on the regular town meeting not to raise raise taxes because uh, they all already have been raised in the special town meeting. Okay, so Pat, you're asking. Yeah. I think you're asking me to figure out a motion. So yeah. I'm happy to word one. Let me just make sure we're working according to the timing that Carmen just laid out. Also, um, and I appreciate that input, Peggy, because that'll help in wording a, a motion here. So the 30 days um, would be the window within which we would need to figure out our options to present at the hearings. So if we are getting our estimates October 20th, um, maybe Lorraine, can you help me with when we could, even on a tight time frame, then be ready or, or Ian to present estimates at a hearing? So, I, I put this up on the screen just to help help you Great. guys understand how things Thank fall you. into place here. So this is our this is our path that we kind of laid out for design deliverables and estimates. And so we have the the sixty percent set being done at the end of September, and then being estimated thereafter, and really having that in in hand and ready to present to this committee by October nineteenth. Um, and then, you know, having two follow-up meetings to, to kind of resolve things thereafter. And th this was, uh, before I started changing these dates here, this is a live, live, uh, Microsoft project file. And then we have next steps, 90%, just so you see it here, 90%, uh, 
estimate in uh, December and, and ready for delivery to you guys in early January and then 100% documents and bid package by February 22nd. And that's what we've been showing for a while now. And that's maintaining our existing schedule. So um, some other things to think about or consider here is obviously we need to we need to do a pre-qualification process. Um, and I think that that's something that we would be comfortable proceeding with now because it's something that you can do without, um, doesn't really impact the other things that we're doing here. So we can we can pre-qualify and have contractors ready um, and, and uh, a final list ready by uh, December of this year if we get started in the, in the near future. And um, the other consideration is just the bid process. You know, we've all been talking about calibrating the budget before bid. And so this is, this is the timeline that we laid out for bidding, which was, it, it coincides with the, <clears throat> see the bid package being complete and then just going through the bid process um, and, and having that uh, start in February, late February and, and making an award in, in um, April. So, that okay, be, so if we oh. that yeah, I, I, that being said, I I started manipulating these dates here on the on the town process. So just for conversation purposes, I tried to I tried to lay out a, a similar um, timeline that that Matt had laid out here with durations and that sort of thing. So if you you know I can I can play around with these dates as we're talking here, but let's say you open a warrant next by the end of next week, th this is kind of how the dates would play out here. So you'd have um, your public hearing in mid, mid October special town meeting and, you know, on the 9th and a vote on the 17th of November. Yeah. There are a lot of factors that play in there. Like, you know, you've got, <laughs> uh, you know, holidays and, and lots of things yeah. that play into the, that, that's the, this is getting things in before Thanksgiving, essentially. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I guess then the question is, are we comfortable going to the hearing with the documents in mid October before we have back the 60% numbers? Um, now, granted, these are all things typically, you know, you get approval for your number at town meeting before all these come in anyway. Um, but given the situation we're in and the uncertainty, are we comfortable with that or do we want to push it back, let's say, 10 or 20 days so that we have at least the 60% numbers in hand before we're going to the hearings? Is that a clear question, Pat? Is that what we're looking at first? Yeah, it's, um, I think the, 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 uh, the question that I would ask is, can we do that? If we do that, is that going to work with this timeline for designing and right? You know, all, all, you know that I, I, our comfort level. Yeah, we can talk about that, but I think it. You know, first of all, we do that. How how long can we push this out before we're into that um, squishy period about designing to the to the scope or designing to the budget? Right. And I don't know if Lorraine or Ian got a question. Lorraine, could you help us with that? So I think, Ian, if you plug in open warrant on September 1 right there, just to go to the dates that were just put out there, that would take us to November 29th. Yeah. But the, the public hearing on September 30th would be in, in advance of the 60% estimate. Um, so I think a lot of the questions you'll people will ask at the hearing is, well, what is the number? So if you made that in the middle of September for opening the warrant, Ian. And then the public hearing is, what, what I'm looking for is to get the public hearing to be after October 20th, right? So yeah. if, if, right. What you're, if what we're trying to do is do, you know, be proactive, but be prepared, I think we'd want to be have enough information at the public hearing. We could prepare the options with the information we have, what we know now. But we want to be able to have that, you know, 
real life information at the public hearing. Right. You know, so if we if we prepare the options with the DD estimate, with the VE that you'll you've taken and you will take in between now and then, and then at that public hearing we can say, and we just received the sixty percent. Here is where we are. You know, we can we can adjust, we can talk about it, but at least you're not then waiting till October twentieth to start the process. Right. Um, and this gets us into it, so that ends up with a town meeting in early December. Yeah. And can that still keep us within our timeline to where we're not <coughs> creating delays? So that is the conversation that Chris Popoff rightfully said needs to be had uh, with the town manager and town council because we need to talk about risk, right? So risk of continuing design, knowingly being over budget and who owns that risk. Okay. Yeah, and and so if we were if we were to follow the the schedule as laid out, we would have authorized SMMA to proceed with ninety percent by ten twenty seven. So the, that that wouldn't be the case with this process here, unless process. you had them continue designing at at risk. Which right, which and awesome even if we moved our open warrant back to where you had it originally at you know, 826, let's say, it still doesn't get our commitment that we would have given them at 90%. You know, it, it still doesn't bring the town meeting before October 27th. It, no, it, it doesn't, okay. but it kind of lessens the- But it the, lessens the risk. The time frame there. Okay. So I just- um, Oh, and Kari, sorry. So I, I, I think that what we should probably, if you don't need a date on it, um, for the, uh, for the if, if you don't need a date for the vote, what I would suggest is that we have a conversation with town council um, as soon as possible to understand, you know, what the risk implications are, because that might change things. That makes sense. So if the motion can be without a date. So the motion could be without a date. The motion could if, include, if can, you, know, as soon, you know, you could say as soon as possible pending approval. from. Yeah, that makes sense. So I'll wait. I'm assuming Pat's going to let Kari speak. Before yeah, Kari. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I just want to say that with with vote by mail now being you know permanently in the law, we need to factor um, three weeks that don't have holidays involved for getting ballots out. Also, we have a state election November eighth, so town meeting the day after would not be practical. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay, so Pat, do you want me to try to word a motion here? Yes, please do. Okay. So I move that the middle school building committee request that the select board initiate a town meeting process. Um, the date of that initiation to be as soon as possible, but confirmed per discussions with town council and our professionals to establish when they can do it on a risk basis. Is that enough detail for the motion? Matt, you're going to well first of all i think we're talking about a special town meeting not a town meeting oh sorry special uh, town but, meeting is what i meant but to then say. The, the second thing is i don't think you actually want it to be as soon as possible i think as we were discussing you're trying to get it to happen uh at a time where the public hearing can be held after the 60 percent estimate um so well that that was the debate it's not necessarily after that i think it was somewhere between august 26th and September 14th. And the, whether we want the hearing after October 20th is somewhat dependent on the discussions with town council. Okay, and then, well, and I, again, I, I suspect that whatever town council says is legally possible that if there's a significant amount of money being voted at a special town meeting, we're gonna have a special election. I, I just expect that the select board won't go for that. I can't speak for them. Uh, but then the the other problem here is, I think, again, not speaking for my colleagues on the select board, 
to for them to authorize a special town meeting i think we'd want to know well what are you going to ask for uh what's the amount of money okay yep that's what, fair and, okay. and uh why is it that you want this money now uh you know to ask for it uh, I, I, if we don't have that information at the time that you know this request is being made i really would be surprised if this select board would want to authorize such a special town meeting okay so what that's a good point so how about we add to the beginning of that motion based on significant economic changes and an increased uh, estimate that we are requesting that they initiate the special town meeting process um, for a warrant that at this point we will sketch at per Peggy's suggestion up to 112 million with the plan that we know our plan is that we will hopefully come in with numbers lower than that as options but we use up to 112 to give us the range that we need do i need to state it all again all together yeah, yeah let's let's get it okay so <laughs> let me try that again sorry about this um I, okay so <laughs> i move that the middle school building committee um because of significant economic changes and higher estimates than anyone expected um, request that the select board initiate a special town meeting process um, to be initiated sometime between august 26th and september 14th based on the feedback from town council and for the warrant to include approval of an amount up to 112 million instead of the agreed upon 103 from the last special town meeting, um, but with specific numbers and options to be provided by the time of the finance committee hearings. Did I capture it all? <laughs> I think you did. Does does it do people feel like they understand what the motion is? Right. So without debating the motion, is there anything that you think I have missed before we actually finalize the motion? Ooh, the pressure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Do we have a second for that motion? Please, I hope. <laughs> I'll second it. Thank you, Alexa. I understood it, so I can second it. All right. Discussion. Uh, Pat. Uh, I understand the motion. Um, what gives me pause is the the inference that this is all based on uh, circumstances beyond our control. Um, and I think some of our problem uh, we own, we haven't we haven't finished our value management, for example. Um, and really, to my to my way of thinking, uh, ha haven't shown the discipline that we promised ourselves we would show over the last couple of months toward value management. So understand the motion, not really comfortable with the fact that the inference is this is all circumstances beyond our control. This is our project. We own it. We're responsible. Thank you. Court, I hear you. Um... I understand what you're saying. I am also very well aware that there are towns all around us who are going through this very same process um, because of the uh, inflationary nature of the times we're in and the escalation of the construction costs, COVID, war. I, I, I do not doubt for a minute and I pledge to this committee that we will make every effort whatsoever to make reasonable and responsible decisions based on our charge to build a middle school uh, over the next period of time until we get to a town meeting with some choices for our committee, uh, for our community. Um, but I, I, I don't take, I, I guess I take exception that this is, you know, that there's something more we could have, we could be doing. We, there is more that we will be doing. I, I take exception that we won't be doing that, that effort. We will be doing that effort. 
We just want to get this on the calendar. Yeah, I understand. Thank you. Yeah. Any more discussion? Uh, Matt. Yeah, just as a practical matter, uh, the select board has uh, meetings uh, scheduled at August 29th and September 12th and uh, September 19th. Uh, just that, you know, it would be likely to be uh, calling the meeting at one of those. So I guess the question is, you know, are you asking for the select board to act on 20, the August 29th or perhaps on September 12th? And the, the other question is, given the kind of amount of restatements going on with this motion do we have another meeting before september 12th where maybe a more precise uh request and motion could be made so that you know something could be uh voted on perhaps at the select board meeting on september 12th uh, given that that seems more like the time frame in which you want the special town meeting warrant to open anyway so just a a question. Uh, not saying that this has to be withdrawn now, but that that's some additional info. Don and then Steve. Uh, just to respond to Matt regarding the 29th, I think previously Pat and I committed to attending the select board meeting on the 29th of this month. That's right, um, and that yeah, was so a just presentation offering... then regardless. Yes. Yeah, just offering the suggestion that if there are questions about it or things that we need to address, that we could certainly do that at that time. So um, just you mentioning the date reminded me that we were already committed to attending that day. So might be helpful if there's information in front of them that if they have questions about anything that Pat or I could address it that evening. Thanks. My only question would be of the establishing the value at 112. 5% um, over the, I believe what the estimate is, the actual estimate value is 108.4. Is that correct, Ian? Including bidding contingency. Right. That, that's correct. So I, I want to be sure that we're all in agreement of the value that we're asking. And I think it's prudent that we ask for the max uh, that we think because there's we can always go down but we can't go up so five percent over that would be 113.8 i would be comfortable voting for a full value of 113.8 but i open it for others to opine that does sound smart i'd be happy to amend my motion to make it 113.8 instead of 112. can i just comment on that the um I mean, maybe our professionals would disagree, but quite a bit of that's in soft costs. I think our construction estimate, that's total project budget. I think our estimate, uh, I don't know the exact amount, used to be 80-ish. <laughs> now we're probably mid 80s for construction uh, estimate, Ian and Lorraine. I don't have these numbers committed. I think it's 80, 86. 86. I, yeah, I'm trying to get the numbers here. Yeah, so um, that's my recollection, mid 80s for uh, construction costs. So a lot of what we're talking about is related to construction cost. I think um, uh, the major pieces of soft cost have been established as in contract amounts for our professionals. Um, but I don't know if that, so I guess what I'm suggesting is putting whatever percentage on top of a total project budget versus a construction. I, I don't, I guess I don't know the guidance on that. I've never been down this road, so. <laughs> I'll look to our professionals to provide guidance on what their comfort level is, but um, a lot of what we're talking about has to do with the construction cost. Yeah, the, the soft costs are not going to, I don't think you need the 5% on the soft costs. Yeah, that's what I would have expected, which is why I'm bringing it up, because that certainly adds a substantial amount to what we're talking about. Chris, can you do the math on that? Never mind, Chris. Yeah, uh, I don't think anybody would regret rounding up and having that room to maneuver for the unforeseen. If there's substantial redrawing, uh, I'm not comfortable. I'm not going to speak for SMMA that 
they have an absolute firm hand that we know all those soft costs and some of the other things. And quite frankly, even at 113.8 million, um, I, I, I think when we're into this, that's not gonna be sufficient if, if that's a number. I mean, once you're at 113.8, it's almost as if give a round number of 114 or 115 so you do have that room to maneuver. As we've said several times here, you can always ask for less. Right, and that is our goal. Um, all right, in the interest of time, I wonder if we can come to a decision about this number so we can decide whether or not we're going to make this recommendation to the select board. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys saw what I was doing here, but 5% of the 86 million is 4.3 and change. And just adding that to the, yeah, adding that to the 108 is 112, 720, 439. So, um, so these, showing the math. Yeah. That doesn't include the VE we've already taken, though, right? In this that, that, that does not, no. Peggy? You're muted. And that was my suggestion to increase the number, and I'll, I'll stand by that and defend it. I will have some of my committee members sort of hands like, oh, my God, it's even more. Blah, blah, blah. Um, I think if uh, this committee is moving with the uh, on the 29th, then it might make sense to get a quorum of your meeting, your committee, and post it so that you can make meetings in your discussion with the select board and get it moved along. Otherwise, it's, you know, backing and forth thing over. Yeah. yeah. So that's my, and then, and that will help the uh, finance committee to have, you know, the warrant article sooner rather than later. I also think you might want to schedule, look at the schedule of the special town meeting and the regular town meeting warrants. So, you know, you might, you might be proposing something at regular town meeting. It's um, all town meeting, sorry. If uh, it work out in the special. So Peggy, it was a, a little hard for me to understand, but let me just uh, summarize what you're what you're suggesting is that we make sure we have a quorum of our committee at the August 29th meeting of the of the select board, so that if the select board decides to go ahead with this, we we do what. So, so that if you end up negotiating between a different approach, you would have a quorum of your committee and you would post that meeting. Uh, it would just give you the opportunity to negotiate an alternative approach um, on, you know, what, what we hate, but, not, well, but on the fly. Um, <laughs> So that, is, that will allow you to, you know, keep up the momentum, I guess. So that's, that's just a procedural thing. Um, and then, you know, the sooner, the sooner you get the special town meeting scheduled, the more likely you will have an answer and you'll still, you know, have the all town meeting. And not shaking the tip. Well, I'll defer. Matt? Yeah, I just think that, again, uh, people don't like, in the select board especially, just making decisions right on the fly uh, in, in the course of a meeting. It does seem like there is a real opportunity here on, the, on August 29th to have the co-chairs come in, discuss the background for this, get the reactions of the select board, and then get a vote scheduled for September 12th. Uh, to proceed. And, and that seems to fit with the rest of the schedule. And it, it, it would give time between August 29th and August, September 12th to sort any things out that, that uh, you know, came up in that meeting. So I, I just would recommend that strategy, but, you know, that's just me. Okay. 
Sorry. Please. Thank you. Uh, as far as the schedule, one thing I forgot to mention, and you you would want to think about the timing is the the special election um, needs to be called at least 35 days in advance of holding it. So how that coincides with calling and holding this special town meeting is a consideration. Yeah, but with a 60 day schedule between opening the warrant and having the special town <laughs> time, I'm hoping. Right. And sorry, just to clarify, is there a time window that has to happen in between the special town meeting and the special election? Does it have to be, you know, 35 days later or so? No, no it could be right no. after special town meeting. It can be before, it can be after. Okay. It just has to be called. 35 days in advance of holding okay. it. Perfect, thank you. Thanks. All right, are you amending your- uh, Okay, so I will amend my motion to a number. I mean, what I've heard, I'm flexible on this. What I've heard is Chris's suggestion to make it around 114 or 115, just so we have the flexibility given that we're likely to lower it again later. So I will amend my motion as stated previously. Yes but to replace the number 112 with 115. 115 million, obviously. Do we need a second on the amendment? I'm now I'm lost. Um, mm -hmm. Parliamentarians among us. Right, I think it needs to be seconded again. I'll second it again. Okay, okay. any discussion? Seeing none. Uh, I think we're ready to. I, I just wanted to state that since this is a motion asking me to do something, I'm going to sit out this vote. Okay. All right. Um, so we are asking for a consensus on this committee to request that the select board take up this uh, special town meeting um, request. Uh, and I, I don't know if this is a formal vote or if this is. I think it is, Pat. Yes, it is. You got a motion on the it table, Pat. Yeah, okay. we have a motion a second, so we need okay. to call. Okay. So, um, you want to say if you are in favor? Is this how we do this? Uh, okay, Alexa, this is our. Are we in favor? Alexa, yeah. Yes. Court. No. Heather. Yes. Justin, oh no, you're not a voting member. Peter? Peter had to step away. He texts me, 8.30, he had to leave. Okay, Don? Yes. Um, Lori? Yes. Uh, uh, Pat, yes. Chris? No. Charlie Parker? No. Matt Root? Yes. Steve Sichewski? Yes. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven yeses, and one, two, three, Nose, have I got that right? Anybody else keeping track of this? That was right, Don. Okay. So the motion passes, um, and we will ask the the select board to to move on this. I guess that's asking. Kari and Carrie to um, help us get the bond council and the town council uh, involved and Lorraine would follow, Lorraine and Hill will follow up with them uh, so that by the August 29th meeting, we can, uh, the select board can consider this with all of the information in hand. Uh, are we all in agreement with that? Lorraine, Ian, everybody knows what their marching orders are? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, thank you. 
I know this took a long time. We have a lot of work ahead of us for the, the continued value engineering. We have a meeting scheduled for next week, which we will, we will hold um, so that we can continue that value engineering process. I appreciate everybody's time, but this is really important. Um, this is uh, extraordinary times and it's taken an extraordinary amount of work to make sure that we have the community, community input that we were charged to have for this project. Um, so thank you everyone. Uh, we can start on the value engineering. I have a hard stop at 10. I know there are others who might have a hard stop earlier than that. Pat, uh, Lorraine hard, needs to go at 9.30. I have a hard stop at 9.30. I'm sorry, at 9 I just have to. All right, let's just, let's just dive into this for, the, for 15 minutes and then we'll pick it up again on August 25th. Okay. All right. To, to that point, Pat, um, might we step back and simply examine the VE list provided by SMMA, uh, look to members for uh, ideas about that VE list and uh, fine tune that VE list so we uh, clearly set the table for next week rather than diving in at great length on one or two items on the list already, step back and uh, do the planning for next week would be my suggestion, please. Okay, um, I'm not 100% sure what that means, but um, it sounds like a, a reasonable step to not try to, to, to take these one by one. How, how do you propose we do this, Court? Well, again, my thinking was we could simply look at the items that uh, remain under consideration and ask ourselves, uh, indeed, is this the complete list that should be under consideration? Uh, does anybody have uh, creative ideas that would impact cost without impacting educational delivery? I think today would be, uh, in the few minutes we have, an appropriate time for that conversation, time better spent than diving in and debating a particular item. Okay, I'd like to suggest that we're not gonna go back and talk about anything that we've already as a committee accepted or rejected, um, but that we're gonna look at uh, what you're suggesting is what's on this list and then anything else anybody would like to pro propose adding. Is that what you're saying, Court? Yeah, more or less, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think everything's gotta be in play if we have a budget problem. Um, so I wouldn't want a, a unilateral decision that uh, something's off the table if, if we have a problem to solve. Uh, but, but added to that, uh, I think we are trying to stay true to the idea of a you know, very spacious, flexible educational wing that we don't anticipate uh, touching vis-a-vis -vis square footage. So courts put forward a, a process. We've got, uh, what, 14 minutes left to, to engage in that. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna say, okay, let's go with court's suggestion. Let's uh, spitball some, some ideas from people and we will see where that takes us. Yeah, so I had uh, noted that the bridge and the ramp that we talked about or, or walkway, um, it looks like I, I asked a question about when that was added to the project. And it seems to me that it was after schematic design. And it also seems like there are a few other things that have been added to the project since schematic design. And it, I just, it left me wondering a little bit about process here and you know what what the building was that we did vote on at special town meeting versus what we're looking at now and i i thought that this phase we were in now is detailing not additional design elements and i just it seemed like those would be candidates uh to really get extra scrutiny because I don't think they should be there in the first place unless we as a committee have evaluated them. 
So when you say the bridge, you mean the the bridge off of the, the uh, under the bridge that crossed under the uh, the wooden bridge. The, the wooden bridge. Yeah, the wooden bridge, and then the walkway to the to the um, cafeteria lawn area. That yeah. these things oh. were not, as far as I could tell elements of the project that were visible in any plans that I saw before. So uh, can I can yeah. I explain? <laughs> so drawings and the design evolve as you go from phase to phase, OK, which which makes sense, right? We have conceptual drawings up front, then we do preliminary and then we get to a schematic design. Schematic design is is not it doesn't capture everything. It never would. Design development, which is the phase we just concluded, fleshes out all the final design pieces that we need to um, execute that project. And then contract documents, which is the phase we're in now, is how we draw those and detail those so somebody can build them and bid them. So during the design development phase, Matt, there was a lot of grading that was we were looking at as we were getting around and realized that there was a disconnect that we could we couldn't grade it as we find, uh, continue to do detailed design in design development and needed to add that ramp. We also did a second round of educational programming, which is very consistent with the school design process and talked about the connectivity of those spaces. So as we said, we had the Woodbridge on there to take it off again and we would add grading so it would make the students walk up and around a little further. That's what it would need to be. But there will be components as we evolved from SD into DD, where we had to complete the design. Schematic design doesn't complete the design phase. Design development completes the design phase of, of a project. And then contract documents is how we detail and design it. So you will not see, there won't be everything that was in SD is, show, is not everything that is shown in DD was shown in SD. And not everything that's shown in CDs will be shown in DD because it's elaborated on at each phase of the project. But we're talking about like a four hundred thousand dollar edition scope, and we don't have a standing design subcommittee to review these changes. And I mean, they're substantive changes to the budget, and it just seems like the process is a little out of whack to me. I think that's probably the only one you're going to find that's like that, Matt. The rest of them are very much evolved. That was truly a challenge as we tried to grade out the site, look at soils, look at management of the materials. So I'm not sure you'll find another example like that. And, and I, I do wish it was in at schematic design. And, and this is something we discussed last, last week. So, um, but Matt, are you, and I know it, I, I can't see the whole value management log. So I, I can't remember what we ended up with the bridge in the, I think we, there was a lot of discussion about that. Um, are you, you, this it is, was still a pending item at the end. Okay, of this is something you would recommend. So if we're, if we're just going to spitball this right now, and you're, this is what you're throwing out, you would like to make sure that we really look at that piece as something we could remove. Well, it seemed to me that, yeah, it's come in kind of late in the game, hadn't had a review by any of our committee or subcommittee. Um, you know, it, it doesn't seem to fit in our process. It it wasn't the part of the building that I the town voted on. Is. Uh, okay, so we can we can just make can we make a note of that because we're not really going to proceed much with the VE log today. We're just but like there's this big white thing at the end of the east end of the building. I can't really tell what it is. I don't think we've discussed it. Which thing? It looks okay. like a patio or no, I don't know, so that is, I, or something. Nope. That's where we failed to put the green grass paint on the rendering. That's all that is. Okay, that's good. Uh, Charlie and uh, Heather, you both have your hands up. So Charlie, yeah, I, I I would agree with with Matt that I, I think what what goes on and or what went on in schematic design were hints of various uh, you know features that might be incorporated in the building or directions that might be taken and so forth. But you know, when you finally see what what it really means to to execute or build out the design for those things, you go, "Whoa! Yeah, I'm not sure we ever discussed that, or not sure we agree with that, or that seems different than what we would have perhaps done." Um, you know, I think you know when you look through the the May, I think it's the May nineteenth uh, slides. Uh, you know, it, it's quite striking the, the way some of this stuff turned out, and I. I 
I would uh, um, basically say that that the entire bridge section, including the including the access to the area under the bridge, including the the uh, the rampway that goes from the front of the building to underneath the building. Um, you know, and all of it, including the bridge itself, uh, you know, ought to be examined. I think what, what's happened here is over time, we've doubled down and tripled down on, on investments in this section of the building, including the terrace and the, the retaining walls, in, in, you know, in front of the building. And I think, you know, this grading situation, um, really, I think that you, you mentioned that, that, Lorraine, I think that this is really added some significant um, investment in this in this building. I think this really needs to be checked out. So I would basically say that everything associated with that section of the building, there's probably 10 items. What have we looked at very carefully? Because I, I, I think there's potentially a couple of million in there um, to be had, uh, you know, if you took a very close scrutiny on it and did a, a, some serious rework. So, so Pat, um, Pat, I am going to have to leave, but I would like to just say that that's, that's, that's all I had review, to say on that. We did review this at the design subcommittee. Um, this is the design subcommittee meeting on May 19th that that was reviewed. So we did talk about it. Just Matt might not have been at it, but that that definitely was part of the review. I apologize. I have a hard stop at, in three minutes. So I need to be at a meeting. Thank you, Lorraine. So from a process point of view, let's, um, Charlie, you've raised, that's an area you want to look at. And, and so the, the architects and he'll know that that's an area you want to look at. Heather, did you have something you wanted to? Um, I just want to comment quickly. This isn't too, well, first I, I want to point out, I think the two bridges being discussed were different. I think Matt was talking about the wood bridge and maybe Charlie was talking about the, the, the glass. I just, I actually have to disagree with the way Matt has positioned this and, and the work of the, the professionals since then. I feel, and this isn't to debate whether or not we should have any of these elements. I just think it's important that this is in the correct context. We asked our professionals at the beginning of this process to design our building that was not a design us a building that was not just a concrete block. We asked them to design it with a connection to nature with feel, with an with an you know things that encourage the kids to to feel that connection to nature and in the environment and sustainability and all of that. We have asked them throughout this process to do that. So when they have added details to our designs that add those things, like a wooden bridge or something that has natural elements, I think we need to appreciate that they've done that because we've asked them to. And I don't want this to be positioned as something where we're looking at things that were, were snuck into the plan somehow when I just don't think that's the case. So I, I just feel strongly that we need to keep this discussion within context when we have it. Thank you. Chris? No, you can take your hand down. Okay, Charlie, I see you still have your hand up, but- I'm trying to, I'm trying to bring it down. No problem. Okay. okay there. All right. All right. Uh, my, my hope was that if there were things that people really wanted to make sure got on the table for next week, so that as court said, everybody's sort of, you know, prepared for it. If there were things people wanted to throw out now, fine. But I don't think we want to get into um, a lot of discussion about this. Um, so, Chris, if you've got something, let's, let's hear yeah, it. Ju just big picture stuff. If we're working from the bridge that connects to the public wing, then we move into auditorium, gym discussion, some bigger items there, both in space and in finishes, and keep that in mind as we look at the log. And maybe we have to add things to the log and some of those details. Uh, because to pick up on Charlie's point, I think there can be significant savings in that part of the building that would not do ill to the concept the voters approved and the concept we're trying to bring forward to Heather's point. I think we can do a lot there and it will still meet the educational plan and all the, the, the things we want to see in this building. So, so in summary, what you'd like the, to, the designers to be prepared to do when they come back next week is to talk about what possible savings and trimmings we could do in the public wing of the building um, that don't necessarily reduce the size of those 
spaces because that's what the community asked for. Uh, not necessarily. I think we have to. We have to. Lorraine has already put that out there as a yeah. significant cut of three thousand square feet in the gym. That's going to be a big deal for the community. So right. we have to look at that more detail. Likewise with the auditorium, moving from four hundred twenty seats to two seventy is a big deal. There's significant savings. Then we get into some of the finishes in the gym where there can be some good savings there and some other things. So we can still meet the goals of an auditorium space and a gym that has a full-size basketball court. But we've got to think of those concepts here as part of our homework. So when we present something, if we get to town meeting, uh, it really looks like we thought, thought this through carefully and, and, and we've made the adjustments we can. Okay, I think that's helpful. I think that's important because what we're talking about is, you know, big rocks and we're talking about where we can trim. And that's kind of what our process is going to be, I think, over the next few meetings. Um, anybody else want to voice something before we uh, move on to new business and public comments? Oh, and the communications update. I, I just want to make sure that we're clear here with the comments from Charlie, um, you know, essentially this would be a request to relook at the connector bridge between the buildings, including the terrace below and retaining walls and 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 and, and, and an alternative uh, solution for connectivity and and um, receiving students. Is that something that this committee wants us to pursue? from a value management standpoint, because we need to know that, we need to have clear direction on that, and we need to get the estimators working on that, if if so. Is that, so is that what you were asking? Is, is that what you were asking, Charles? Online? Sorry. Is that what you were asking? You were talking about the, the connector bridge between the two buildings? Yeah, I'm talking about the connector bridge. I'm talking about also the the method of access to the space between the two buildings, and the I'm talking about the oh. the uh, uh, it's not a veranda, uh, the terrace, the, the green terrace in front of the uh, in front of the media center. I'm talking about all that stuff, including the you know the steps and the the, the ramping going down the other side and so forth. Um, I think that looking at this, taking a second look at this stuff would make sense given the budget situation, unless, you know, maybe we want all that stuff. We want to spend the money on all that stuff. But I, I think that we ought to take a look at it and we ought to make sure that this is really what we want. Okay. Uh, I, I can I can parse this out for you in, in writing if you'd like, and then you can you know, add it in there and you can dump it when we have the, the VE meeting. I, I think it's difficult to sort it out live right now. Right, it is, and and we wouldn't want to do that. But I think what Ian's question is: Does the committee want this? Is a big this is, would be a big scope of work to 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 take a look at. Don, I'm going to call on you because you may have something helpful to say here. Just for clarity, you're talking about the lobby, Charlie. Well, I, I you know I'm talking about we've had a series of let's let's. If you want to chat about this now, we'll chat about it now. But uh, yeah, the, the notion that, that, that hold on, hold on. If you're talking about the lobby, we've been down this road. We talked about this at a design subcommittee at great length. We, we talked about we talked about uh, cutting down on the length of it, and there's a possibility that you could cut down on the width of it. Um, yeah, it's I mean, a security we, we, thing. We cannot ask 700 students to enter into this building every day through the main door into a space that's too small. That's part of the grossing factor, the 1.5. That's but if you look, if you look at the again, if you look at the slides from from the from the 19th, uh, I'm just telling you what my reaction was that 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 you know you have cubbies on the on the south side and you have tables on the the north side, which would tend to suggest that well that isn't for flow in there, that's for something else, and I'm not sure. Not sure, you know, if, if we want to look for ways to to reduce costs. That if 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 we uh, retain the part of the connector that's designed for flow, then we don't necessarily need the the pieces that are designed for sitting down and having having uh, you know doing work. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm, gonna... I, I'm not I'm not. Hey, I don't think 
this probably is the time to debate this. Yeah, um, I don't think so either. So I'm, I'm just going to I'm going to put a pause here. Let's just put a note in. We're not asking anybody to do anything right now. We will have more of a discussion about this next week when we look at our value management log. But we're just making a note that that's been raised by a committee member. And, and, and by the way, we've already discussed uh, auditorium and we've discussed gym. That doesn't suggest that we wouldn't discuss it again. Uh, so I, I think this is this is fair game. I think we've got to look at this stuff, to, you know, to make the make proof that we've we've put a best effort into this. So uh, there, there's know. nothing is in nothing is going to be taking. We're not taking action on anything. We're just throwing out thoughts that everybody knows what folks are thinking about. In, that's in, right. That's in right. Minutes. Um, and and then we really do need to to wrap up the meeting. Um, Steve, you've got your hand up. It was similar to what you're saying. I think our task is to develop a warrant that says the school that we originally designed costs 108 and it could be more than that. Do you want to proceed with that town? Yes or no. If you do not want to proceed that way, we have uh, identified, you know, three other scenarios, which include, you know, smaller gym, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And those are the options that we need to develop as a group here, looking at these, you know, VE items. That, that's well said. Yeah, thank you, Steve. All right, let's uh, let's just move on and um, the communications update. Okay, boy, you're going to have your work cut out for you, Heather. Um, yeah, I. So, <laughs> um, to be perfectly honest, especially since I wasn't here last time, I don't have much of an update personally because I don't think we know what to communicate yet. I mean, I think in terms of. What we've all talked about is we want to get community input. I feel like that's the most important thing. I think that, but you know, forums and I, I've having seen the feedback from the last meeting um, and read the minutes. I know that forums are the the. It sounds like the first choice, and we will certainly run those. Um, I think we still should we should discuss the idea of a survey if that's something that um, the town wanted to kind of jointly take on and make sure that we get it out in all the ways that the town usually gets out surveys too, we could do that. Um, but I I don't have a more of a suggestion now because I don't think we're ready for it yet. Unless someone disagrees, I'm open. To I would it. agree. We, we won't know until after the select board makes their decision as to whether or not they call a special town meeting. So I think that that we can start to, to plan for forums. Um, but you, know, you can start laying down some dates, but we don't know what we're really talking about. Right. And and we've got some work ahead of us. So there we go. I won't make our meeting any longer. Okay. <laughs> any new business? Okay, public comments. Uh, Wilson Kerr. Yeah, hi, thank you. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. I just wanted to commend this entire group. I know you guys are all volunteers. I've been listening this, this morning. Um, just an incredible process to go through. And, and just a, a couple quick comments. I think Steve absolutely nailed it at the end. And the key to this is to keep it simple. Throughout this long meeting, I have heard people raise their hands and sort of go backwards. They raise their hands and want to talk about, let's keep going through the VE process. And no one has suggested they not. All Pat was trying to suggest and what was accomplished in this meeting by a 7-3 vote um, was to put forth a process so we do not have a real jam up and can't have this option to go back to the town. The town uh, voted and, and, and uh, just want to commend you guys for getting to that vote. Um, uh, so thank you for your work and Steve just nailed it at the end. Put forth the number not to exceed and then have options below. One final comment. Um, you guys have not taken this to the selectmen. I know this is a public meeting, um, <clears throat> but I think it should be very clear. And I know that uh, Heather just said that there's not uh, any plan for communication to the town, um, but there's a lot of articles out there, uh, you know, about, you know, numbers and needing to go back. And I don't know what controls you guys have. And I don't think there's any kind of confidentiality about being sure that even though there's no plan for communication, that this group watches the media and watches what's happening to be sure that uh, there is some control put on things. 
uh, as the process unfolds so that uh, representations of what's happening that might be unfair to the process and that don't honor all of the hard work you guys are doing get rolling out there. Uh, thanks very much. Thank you, Wilson. I, can I just clarify quickly, Pat, I agree with um, what Wilson said about the importance of that. And uh, I didn't state clearly. It's not that there's no plan for communication. There's no plan for the um, the incoming feedback yet in terms of timing. We will continue to do our building rep committee reports um, that we will send out as updates of what's going on. So there is a communication plan, just not a, a next level of input collection. <laughs> just want to be clear. Uh, are there any other uh, public comments? So we will have our regularly scheduled meeting uh, next Thursday at 7.30 a.m. Um, I'm assuming it will be a Zoom meeting again. Um, and if we could, uh, uh, Ian and uh, everybody get, get that, let's not make any shorthand links. Let's just get that link on the agenda and make sure everything is uh, up and ready to go. Um, and we will continue this uh, discussion in the value engineering process. Um, I'm, oh, do I have, oh, did someone say something? No. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. I'll second. second. And did we decide we need to go through the roll call for this or not? We don't. We have. don't. We don't. Okay. Then thank you, everybody. This right. was thank you. really thank you. good. Um, thank you for the discussion. Everyone, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Pat.